at the workshop is recording now. Welcome to our District 67 Pathways program, Diverse Applications of Pathways pro Project Series. I'm tonight's host, Celia Du. I'm from Pack Hotels Masters Club. And to let you know more about the Pathways program, we all know that Pathways has been launched in 2018, contains different paths and diverse projects, giving you more choices to cultivate yourself. In this program, we invite speakers sharing their experience of how to utilize Pathways projects into their daily life and hope all the audience tonight could grab our speakers' experiences and develop yours. So the member of tonight's program, including two speakers, Rachel Young and Zhou Wu, and our helpers, the timer, Chloe Xu, and the Zoom master, Yo Li, and myself, Celia. We are all from Paco Toastmasters Club, which is a time-honored Toastmasters Club established in 1982, also the fifth oldest club in Taiwan. So tonight's theme, let me play a little ukulele first. Talking about tonight's topic, arts, cultural, and our life. You can see arts and cultural everywhere. The music we listen to, the shows we watch, and the history which shape our lifestyles. And in my point of view, art and cultural is the nutrition to our soul. A little reminder before uh, I introduce our speakers. If you have any questions during the speech, please leave your questions to our chat box and we will ask the speakers uh, during the Q&A section later. So tonight we are honored to have two speakers in arts and cultural fields. The first speaker is Rachel Young who had devoted herself to picking opera in college and has a remarkable achievement of winning the first place of Chinese opera oratorio contest. And now she still loves picking opera and attends the amateur performance. Through her speech, you will know the terms of picking opera and Rachel will also demonstrate a bit for us. So let's welcome Rachel to share the beauty of Peking Opera. It goes to the pathway level one, project three, introduction to vocal variety and body language. The purpose of this project is to practice using vocal variety or body language to enhance a speech. Let's put just hands together and welcome Rachel. Rachel, please unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, everyone. So oh. my mode, I mo my mode need to be changed, right? To the full screen. Should you share your screen first? No, wait a moment. Okay, let me check it. Wait a moment. Okay, I need help. Hmm? 
-hmm. <laughs> we can see you have the firefighter. <laughs> firefighter. Your hero. The <laughs> problem. Okay, uh, everyone, you can see also Rachel <laughs> nice putting her beautiful dress. And it's a Chinese style dress, right? Yes, Chinese style. <laughs> Just like a ghost. <laughs> huh? Oh, yes. Yes, it's a Chinese packing opera, not fountain of the opera. opera. <laughs> All right, Rachel, are you ready? Please unmute yourself. Okay, Rachel, we need you to unmute yourself. Yes. Yeah, we can hear yes. you. Yes, a little girl. Can you hear me now? Great. Can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. I'm I'm really not good at the computer, but fortunately, I have a a expert husband and as uh, in China uh, picking up I am also an amateur but since uh, I was a little girl I love uh, picking up very much so this story is about a dream of a little girl so hi everyone um, I wonder I wonder if you are really interested in picking up or you are waiting for Joe Wu's uh, fantastic <laughs> sharing. But uh, I, I have confidence that you will um, learn a lot and that you will love picking up pro uh, in the end. So in the beginning, do you love the music before our meeting? It's so yes. beautiful to me. It's an uh, ancient Chinese uh, uh, music. And uh, to me, it's it's just so familiar, but I don't know what's in your mind or in your picture. Is it out of fashion? Or nowadays, maybe we, we all like old fashion, <laughs> like old school becoming a fashion again. So have you heard of this kind of uh, milk, uh, music? So I, I need uh, anyone, if you can answer in the chat box. Don't let me think that uh, I'm just in a monoplay, okay? So now if you think, the music, you like it, please give me one. If you don't like it, you give me two. If you never heard of that, keep, please give me three. Um, tonight, maybe you have some question, but uh, maybe I can answer you afterwards. Now I'll start from a dream of a little girl. In my childhood, in my home, the Peking Opera performed on TV every week, was attracted to me. I like to imitate the actress on the screen and the singing, playing for fun with my sisters and the brothers, a, a sister and brother. <laughs> okay. And I like the beautiful costume, just as you see on the picture. And I like the very special makeup as well. Sometimes, I even imagine that one day I'll be the actress on the stage. When I was 19 years old, I entered into Suzhou University. I joined Peking Opera Club in my college. And my dream finally came true. I, the first time I was on the stage, I played the leading actress named Iron Mero Princess. We call it Ke Jing Gongzhu. In a play called hmm, Sit in the Palace, but in Chinese we call it Zuo Gong. The one is the glamorous lady in this picture. Is she beautiful? Yeah, she is so beautiful. Singing Peking Opera in front of hundreds of audience. Most, most of them are our relatives and the classmates. <laughs> okay. So now I would like to invite you to, with me, to return to the past together, to that moment. So I'll start to sing. So give me some round of applause uh, 
in the chat room, okay. So now I'll show the next page. Is that beautiful? Is that not so unfamiliar to you? Not like the popular song. Thank you for your round of applause. I can see that. So now I will lead you to, to um, experience the beauty of picking up pro. Number one is the beauty of stage design. Number two is beauty of Chinese traditional cultural story. Number three, is the beauty of performing. Well, number one is, I think so many things to share, but I share some very special things. Number one is the uh, beauty of stage design. As you can see, if you have uh, ever, ever experienced picking up row, you can always see one table and the two chairs on the stage, oh. why? You can imagine, you just use your imagination. It's the basic and typical props. Sometimes it re represents living room. Sometimes it represents bedroom, stairs, mountains, and even a cave, according to the plot. So when you're watching Picking up rule, you have to use your imagination, how beauty it is. You can see something, but use your imagination to create the see the scene you cannot see and create the story. Okay, number two is the beauty of traditional cultural story, including the story of Chinese history and unofficial history, legend. Chinese literary masterpieces. It is surely more interesting wa watching, watching the opera than reading the books for most of us, right? Okay. This is including what? This is including Many legends, just like uh, the literary masterpieces. Let me ask you one question. Do you prefer reading those Chinese literary masterpieces or you would rather see opera? For me, I like to see the opera because it's more interesting and simple. So the pictures show here, was when I was in college, I played the roles. Like, uh, have you ever read the book, Xi Xiang Ji, the masterpiece, The West Wing? I played the role called the matchmaker Hong Niang, <laughs> in the middle one. And I met, I think you must be very familiar with the legend, Bai Shi Zhuan, white snake legend. 
and I am the white snake. <laughs> okay, those were um, the days, the beautiful days I played those roles. And uh, the roles in picking up role, including male role, female role, painted face, and the clown. They all have their personality, special way of the voices, expression, and different costume. And I'm good at playing female role. It's just, uh, I just sing for you, okay. So now I'll, um, um, I'll not sing, I'll um, talk. I'll talk in a way of the, uh, the male role, talk but the, their voice are different uh, because of their uh, social status even in uh, i just show you the the scene i just show, show you the um the uh, glamorous lady she was she is a princess but her voice is use uh use jing bai picking dialogue parts because she is a barbarian princess but a uh, different from her, Yang Yuhuan is the king's concubine. So they use different voices to pronounce, to speak. So I will show you the first one, rhythmical parts, the drunken concubine. When she comes to the stage, she speaks, she talks. Wait a moment. I'll use the thing she used. Li Zhi Tian Shan Nan Zi Juan Chen Huan Shi Yin Zi Wei Nian Lu Gong Fen Dai San Qing Zhong San Qing Chong Ai so this is an elegant lady, but for the princess in Zuo Gong, Jing Bai picking Della parts. Let me share with you the story. The story is a uh, in happened in North Song Dynasty. Of course, it's in, it's an unofficial history and the general young general fighting with his enemy in this battle he was caught by the barbarian king but the barbarian king didn't know that he is a general of the song dynasty so he betrothed his lovely daughter Tie Jing Gongzhu. they lived happily until until the secret was found. So the princess talks. Wo shuo fu ma, fa jia shi ye qi la, you shen me hua, ni hai bu shuo ma. More easy to understand and more close to us. Okay, so in the beauty of breaking our pro, I apply the skills, how the voice, how, how we uh, pronounce um, in performing, in picking up pro to Toastmaster, uh, just like our host say, our beautiful uh, Celia said, the pathway in Toastmaster speaking and the vice versa. I think it's very uh, useful and helpful for me. And in Toastmaster, we use vocal variety for when we deliver a public speaking. The volume, big and small, the reason, the past, and the when we want to express our emotion, we also have pause. So in Jingju, we have the uh, promotion is that all the voice like singing and all the movement like dancing. So it's very useful. And for the body language in Toastmaster pathway, also need eye contact, hand gesture, body movement, 
And in packing opera, we also need to um, use tai bu, means footwork. So those things combined together, I think um, during my Toastmaster 20 years, it's very, very uh, useful and helpful for me. Okay, then I will share with you the emotions in the classic play. Just as I mentioned the story, the fourth son of the young family visits his, visits his, um, oh, I, I think I lost something, visits his mother. Finally, that's why the secret is he is young's family and uh, he had, he got a chance to visit his mother. So he has to tell the princess the truth. At the beginning, they were so happy. So they seemed seem so happy. Then the princess found a secret. So she, she wants to know what's the secret. But the general Yang asked her to vow not to tell anyone the secret. So that's why I share with you uh, the one she vowed to, to the uh, general Yang about the happiness anger, sorrow, and the joy. Okay, so let's see some of the professional uh, actor and the actress, how they do this. So do we have sounds? Okay. No. Seems now, Rachel, we don't hear the sound. Oh, that's a bit. Oh, now you can see Ke Jing Gongzu and the Fuma. She asked for his life, right? So that's why she's she, uh, she's barbarian princess. <laughs> okay, but then what happened? They uh, communicated with each other and they still love each other. So the princess uh, uh, agreed to uh, think a way to that the, the, the um, General Yang can go back to see his mother. So wait a minute.
fantastic? Yeah, I have to say that uh, these two um, uh, excellent uh, men in China act actress, even the uh, general round is played by a female. So it, it called gender cross. You cannot see she's very excellent and sound. You can search for the YouTube. She has many, many uh, short uh, film to share about picking up pro. Okay, finally, I I want to share with you that one minute on the stage, ten year practice of the stage. It's not easy to be in uh, professional picking up pro actors and actress and the, even in toastmaster it's not easy to be an excellent public speaker when i was a little girl i dreamed to be uh, the pecking opera actress and then i um, entered into english department so what i wish is that one day i can share picking opera with foreigners uh, in english it's my first try tonight, and uh, this is what I love. My, my Peking Opera Club friends and my love uh, Peko Toastmaster friends. And uh, I think nonverbal language is very, very powerful to touch others' hearts, to encourage people, to make an impact, and to have better communication with others. So welcome all you all. It's never too late to begin to enjoy the beauty of Chinese opera. If you want to learn English, welcome to Toastmasters. That's my sharing tonight and uh, it's my pleasure. If without picking opera and the Toastmaster, just like Jack, all work but no play, make Jack a doll boy. All work but no picking opera, in the Toastmaster, make Rachel a doll woman. <laughs> That's my sharing. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Wow, it's so fantastic of your sharing. Have all the audience seen the gesture and the voice that are so elegant and beautiful. Thanks, Rachel, for bringing the opportunity for us to appreciate the Peking Opera. And this, I think, should be retained for our next generation. Bravo. I think everyone was so amazed. So we didn't have any questions, but no worries. You can still uh, keep the, your questions in the chat box. Uh, so we encourage you to just raise your hand and uh, speak out your questions during our Q&A section. So before moving to our second speech, uh, also a reminder, any questions, just leave it in the chat box. Our next speaker, an active and warm-hearted senior Toastmasters, I believe most of people knows her, our Jo Wu who is not only devoted herself to Toastmasters, also dedicated to community volunteer. Her speech title is A Toastmaster Volunteer in Museum 207. Do you know the Museum 207? It is located on Dihua Street. Dihua Street is the oldest area in Taipei City which is famous for its historic buildings and prosperous commercial activities. Besides shopping and enjoying gourmet food there, do you know there is a museum on this street? Zhou Wu joined Museum 207 as a volunteer in 2020 and Jo applied her Toastmasters communication skills to guide the museum visitors since then. In this workshop, oh, sorry. So let's welcome Jo to share a Toastmasters volunteer in Museum 207. It falls, the, falls into the pathway level four, project two, public relations strategies. 
The purpose of this project is to practice the skills needed to efficiently use public relations strategies for any group or situation. So I invite all of you to put your hands together and to welcome Joel. Thank you, Celia. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Actually, Good evening. tonight, my sharing, this museum is in Ihua Street. There's a, a little bit connection with also Rachel's tonight's topic, making opera. Do you know in Ihua Street, there is a Yongle theater, used to be. And nowadays we call the Yongle Shichang, Yongle Market. That theater used to be also a baking opera theater. Many famous leading actresses have performed there. And that was a very famous theater, Yongle Theater. So two, I would like to give you my sharing about my Toastmaster volunteer in Museum 207. Five years ago, I read news in a magazine. There will be a new museum in Taipei Dihua Street. I always enjoy learning cultural histories and arts in my life. And visiting the museum <laughs> is one of my favorite activities. So I went to Museum 27, 207 and watched the first exhibition. I remember that was about a Taiwanese terrazzo. A very complicated and beautiful construction was about. It was amazing. So after the exhibition, I was about to leave. On the door gate, I saw two ladies wearing red uniform, saying I'm wearing now. And one of them spoke to me. Thank you for visiting Museum 207. I hope you enjoy our exhibition, and we look forward to seeing you very soon next time. At that time, I told myself, one day I will be one over there. So two years ago, when I retired my from, from my job, I applied for the museum volunteer. And after 39 hours of training, internship and also test. That was a very intensive training. I finally got this page, my volunteer page. Museum 207 is named for its address because it's located in Taipei Dihua Street, section one and number 207. Some of you might know that Dihua Street and its neighborhood area was used to be called Da Dao Chen. But do you know why? So before I introduce you Museum 207, let me tell you some stories about Da Dao Chen and also the Dihua Streets. Okay, let's check it out. Wow, this photo was taken almost 100 years ago in 1920s, Da Dao Chen Pok. Do you see, can you see this iron bridge over there? That was the former Taipei Bridge. And this is Dan Shui River. Da Dao Chen used to be, we call a big area of ground that people dry their rice. This is what it's named for. And that is since, 90th century of Qing Dynasty. And because of the convenient Danshui River transportation, Da Dao Chen gradually became the biggest wholesale distribution center in northern Taiwan. And people there were trading with rice, of course, tea, which is very famous, Chinese herbal, medicine. Nowadays, we can see also in the store in Dihua Street 
and also fabrics. Fabrics, of course, in Yongle market is also a very big market too. And now let me check it up another picture. Look at that. This picture is festival on the South Street by Guo Xuehu. Mr. Guo was a very famous group painter in, in Taiwan history. And what is group painting? In Chinese we call is Jiao Cai Hua. And Jiao Cai, group painting is a very special material. And Mr. Guo portrayed with bright colors of the hustle and bustle busy Dihua streets when people were shopping in the streets. Where you can notice that there are many banners in the streets. It's written Zhong Yuan Jie. So this is when the people shopping in Zhong Yuan Jie, Ghost Festival. And this painting has become the iconic image stand for the Hua Streets. So you, sometimes you can see it in the magazine or internet. And if you have been to Da Chiao Tou MRT station, when you stand on the platform, you can see this picture across the, the, the platform on the wall. It is very famous painting. And next, wow, this photo, of course, taken in this year, 2022, because all the people still shopping in the street, but wearing the mask on because of the pandemic. And during the past 20 years, actually, Dihua Streets has transformed from the old business center to the new cultural created attraction. Not just tourists, but also more and more young generation people, as I also noticed that, are willing to visit there. And I think in this street, not just the traditional Chinese medicine store, food wholesale store, there are more and more restaurants, cafes, tea houses, and the interesting gift shops in this old street. So now I would like to ask you a simple question. The question, please give your answer in the chat box. How many times have you visited Dihua Street? The question is, how many times have you visited Dihua Street? Please type your answer in the chat box. Oh, one. Once, what have 10 times? What? Twice? No, you should come. <laughs> Don't miss it. More than five, some of it just like me. Because I was born and uh, grew up in Taipei. So Dihua Street is not strange to me. Shopping in Dihua Street before Chinese Lunar New Year has become one of our family attraction and uh, traditions. So if you visit the Hua Street, please don't just eat in gourmet food or go shopping. You should look up those magnificent historical buildings around you because the Hua Street is what we call a living architecture museum. So check it out. Wow a living architecture museum. One of the highlights in Dihua Street is this beautiful, what we call the Western historical style buildings. It was during the Japanese ruling period that the Western style construction elements were introduced into Taiwan. And uh, the facade, what we call the facade is the front side of the buildings were decorated with beautiful clad sculptures in Greek, Roman, Baroque, and other Western style patterns. And our craftsmen were very, very clever. 
they also elaborate the Oriental and some even Taiwanese patterns and elements into their works, such as birds, flowers, bamboo, and even pineapple, and so on. And this, each of this building, there's a, always a very interesting family story because this building belongs to very, very rich family. And you know, the family rich man story always are very dramatic. So sometimes you can see their stories play in the drama or the movie. So if you come here, this is a very special one. You don't miss it. And what made Dihua Street is so special and different from other old streets in Taiwan. It is because Taipei city government has already designated this area, Dihua Street and his neighborhood area as we call the Da Dao Chen Historic District. And the government set up some regulation and uh, some financial supported plan to preserve this beautiful historical buildings. So here we are in the main nose of the Street, standing a three floor building. This is a typical modern city. Modern is started from the early 20th century. This is a typical modern, modern uh, architecture and with a very simple curved, wide and big open windows and also the window iron decoration. And this building was built in 1962, which it was 60 years ago. Originally, it was used for on the sports floor for the Chinese medicine store. And on the second and the third floor is for the owner's family living space. But after the owner passed away, the building was closed for 10 years. Until our founder, Miss Casey Chen, she bought the house and founded Museum 277 by her own sponsorship and that is very special because she her idea is that instead of building up a new building building for a museum why not just revitalize a, a old building and set up a very interesting museum just in Dihua Street. So in this museum every visitor will be inspired and they will be touched so they can appreciate and cherish this all historical buildings and also our Taiwan local culture. So from the first and the second floor, you have an exhibition area and the exhibition area also on the third floor. Sometimes we have a workshop and a speech in this floor and we have a very small, tiny cafe. And on the top floor, which was one of the hardest spots of our museum, you can enjoy the grand view of Dao Dao Chen historical district. It's very, very enjoying, enjoying experience. And we don't take admission fee, so you can visit anytime. And uh, every day we have uh, twice Dozen to guide, so don't miss it. Now, although Museum 207, the building is still very young, compared with other more than one century, it's a 50 years, but it is a, also a historic building designated by Taipei city government. Why? Because these three beautiful Taiwanese terrazzo. Terrazzo originated from Italy. So in Taiwan, our pressmen, as I said, were very, very clever. So they do their constructions 
on the floor and the wall in their own special way. First of all, usually you will put the copper strip to inlay the pattern. For example, this is a butterfly. Then you will put chips of stone, some color pigments and cement until two or three days, you will polish it with water until the surface is smooth. And this is a very complicated construction method. So as I know, not many people can do it nowadays. So in the first floor, um, in entrance of the first floor, we can see bee collecting honey and ginseng. Why? Because as I say, the original, this house is, was a Chinese medicine store. So we have honey because honey can lessen the fitness of the Chinese medicine. And ginseng, the from Korea, very valuable herbal medicine. And on the second floor, you can see very big, a very big grapes pattern. Why grapes? Because this used to be a living space for the owner's family. So the owners want to symbolize the prosperity of their family. And these three beautiful terraces, I wish you can come. They are really, really very beautiful. So let's talk about our exhibitions in the past five years. Since 2017, we have held many, many different kinds of exhibitions. Some are about architecture. We have an old house, new life. We have a house and the decoration as a wall, beauticians, exhibition, and also the door and windows. They are very, very beautiful. And some of them are, of course, for about the food, which are very, very popular. We have uh, this, the test in summer, oh, the ice chip, my favorite. Also our childhood memory, lunch box. And now we have a pickling and marinating food exposition. And also they are about your life. Life, we have a use and I copy. It's talk about the development history of Taiwan communication tools from telegram, phone, and also mobile phone. And the middle one is the ball game. Looks familiar to you, and that will bring you back to your childhood. And because this year is the year of tiger, we also have a very special exhibition about tiger. So this coming up, our newness, New exhibition started from next week, May 20th to the end of August. Homes from past, from the past. Don't miss it. We present you 50 houses. Wow, their age over one century, 100 years old. Not just in Taiwan, main island, but also in Penghu, Jinmen, and also Maju, and wish you can enjoy these beautiful old buildings. Lao Zai Chen Jing, welcome. So this is what I mentioned, the grand view of the Ray Chai roof houses in Da Dao Chen historical district. I remember our founder, Miss Chen, once said that the house tells its stories. So when you visit our museum 2007, you will feel suddenly turned into a Thai traveler back to 100 years ago. That was an amazing experience. As I recalled, when I was on duty, sometimes people pass by and ask me, is this a store? What are you saying? I will answer, oh no, this is a museum, but we are selling, we are selling the beauty and the value of 
Taiwan local culture. Oh, do I have to pay? Yes, you have to pay, but not the admission fee. You have to pay your attention and your interest. So I hope you enjoy my online <laughs> tour guide tonight, but just don't listen to my instruction or my introduction. You have to come alone or with your friends and on the door get, I'm waiting for you and look forward to seeing you very, very soon. Thank you for your hearing and back to our host, Celia. Thank you, Joe, for your sharing. Wow, we know more about Da Daocheng and the Museum 207. Uh, I think Da Daocheng is a historic area in Taipei. I love the place, the ancient buildings, streets, and when you step on that street, you are totally immersed yourself into Taiwanese culture. I visited Museum 207 more than once and recommend everyone to spend your holiday to visit Museum 207. So after our tonight's two speakers sharing, I could get the point when you facing the cultural, cultural thing, the ancient culture, like the Peking Opera, like the terrazzo that Joe just shared, will you think it is old fashioned? I think after their sharing, I really admire these two cultural retaining ambassador. That's give them again a round of applause. Thank you. So before our Q&A section, and I just mentioned that we don't have intermission today, I invite all the audience to turn on your camera. Let's have a group picture. And if you want to leave the workshop earlier, please refer to our chat box or our slides and we would like to collect your feedback of tonight's workshop. So everyone, that's uh, turn on your camera and let's have a good picture first. Who are you one? Okay. And I will take the picture. So please everyone turn on the camera. Rachel, do I have to make some gesture? Of uh, Sterling, <laughs> our actor. Wow, nice Thank to meet you. <laughs> wow, Sterling. Okay. Yeah. One gesture. Uh, yeah. Any oh yes. Uh yeah, I would like to have Rachel to teach us some gestures in the packing opera, and I think that yeah, show us. Is very special of our tonight's group picture. Yeah, <laughs> you see, <laughs> Starling. <laughs> okay, uh, female and the male are different. So oh. female, you can, uh, if you if you feel shy, you can do this. Okay, oh. and uh, maybe you can point out something like a uh, like the moon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, oh, okay, and uh, or you can say uh, like this. The flower so beautiful, different. Okay, for male they don't use this. So if you see some men use this, you feel it's oh, it's a well. <laughs> how to say that? So you use Emma. two fingers. Two. Fingers. You use two fingers. So if you want to point the the moon, different. Mm. Handsome, right? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did well. Okay. <laughs> okay, you okay. choose one. You can choose. You can choose one. Okay, so we're going to take the picture. One, two, and three. Okay, let's get one more. Okay, this time, okay. One. transition to the male, male style. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, nowadays it's a gender friend friendly age, so. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, so next is our Q and A section, and I found out that we are we don't have any question now, right? Yeah, there's no. Our guests can use a uh, a. Uh, Mandarin Chinese to ask questions. Maybe they are afraid to use English. Is yes. that all right? Okay. So Thank you. if you have any question, you can just turn on your microphone to ask or type in the chat box. Okay, there are some of the questions coming up. So this question is to Rachel from uh, from Yunling, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, from, uh, Thanks for the amazing presentation. Has the Toastmasters training made you a better opera actress? Rachel. Once more, because I saw some questions here. So please uh, repeat your question. Or I think let's have audience first. Okay, Yunling. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, audience first. Okay, so the question is from Sandwich Taipei from Alice Shi. To Rachel, is there an actor or actress playing two roles at the show? And she loved the beautiful makeup. Really wondering to know how long it takes to wear it. Oh. How long? It's a, it's a, okay. Your makeup. How long is the makeup? Mm, depends the uh, depends on the role. If it's a uh, the the leading role, leading actress or uh, leading actress, it takes longer. Yes, because it needs more. Um, I think. Procedures, but it's if it's a maid, like uh, in the beginning, I say yato. The yato needs just short time. So how long it takes? Uh, usually half an hour. Half an hour is needed, at least half an hour. And usually, uh, makeup one person, and for the costume also another. Two people, at least two people, to do these things. Okay, I saw a question is uh, the question one. Uh, Celia, did, did you see that? Dear Rachel, yes, that thank you. Oh, this is from Yingling. Okay, okay, I see. Okay. Oh, we have another question coming up. <laughs> it is from CYTG Toastmasters, Johnston Yang. Oh, Johnston. Mm -hmm. And he said, which show would you recommend for a beginner to watch to enjoy the beauty of packing opera? Um, actually, uh, I'll recommend some, but since uh, opera is not so often, so maybe you are wait for a, a long time, but maybe you can, you can search it uh, on the YouTube, like uh, the story of the, how to say that? The king of the monkey, Mei Ho Wang. Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong, Mei Ho Wang. And uh, last year, they have three generations of Mei Ho Wang get together and uh, perform on the stage. And the uh, first generation is uh, Zhu Lu Hao. So you, you can also search the keywords Zhu Lu Hao. Zhu Yuan Zhang the Zhu, Lu Shi Lu Di the Lu, Hao, just Ying Xiong Hao Jie the Hao. You can search Zhu Lu Hao and can, you can uh, enjoy the martial arts in this uh, opera. And also, you can um, find like Pan Jing Lian Yu Wu Da. It's also from an official history legend, Sui Hu Zhuan, Li Mian the Pan Jing Lian Yu Wu Da. It's a, also very cute. And um, also you can find uh, like a Shi Yu Zhuo, cute the, well, Jade, Jade, uh, hand the rain. 
that, that is uh, also uh, very, very interesting. Yeah, for the beginners, uh, I, I think you can search this. And uh, we also have, now we have a um, Ku Yun Ju Chang. Ku Yun Ju Chang is, a, is a, in YouTube. You can join it and find so many short film to introduce uh, about, about uh, picking up role. I think they did very well and they have English uh, explanation, translation on it. So when you, when you saw this, when you read this, you can both uh, read Chinese and uh, English. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Thank you, Rachel. Oh, 爱情故事. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 爱情故事, like a white snake legend. It's a sad, sad story. <laughs> um, in, yeah, uh, I think uh, uh, a little bit sad because most of the uh, love story is not happy ending. <laughs> in picking up role, but uh, during the procedure, but you can you can search for like a da deng dian happy ending. Um, but but not a good demo because one husband and two wives. Okay, skip it. <laughs> um, the other other things like uh, uh, so many I can I can recall like uh in Hong Liang Xi Xiang Ji. Tui Ying Ying and uh, Zhang Shen, also a love story, okay? Thank you, thank you for, oh, already get the Ku Yun Ju Chang, so you can search more and more information, yes. Okay, we have uh, another question from Dolly, our guest. She mm -hmm. asked how long- Excuse me, we, we, it seems we missed one. Question after the you in Alice, Alice, I just saw her questions. The four previous on the previous. Yes. Is, is there, there an actor or actress playing two roles at the show? Yes, we we uh oh yeah. Yes, uh, I just Ask the questions, but Rachel, did you answer this question? Is there no. an actress playing two roles at the show? Uh, not so many, but you know, nowadays, uh, picking up role also have very uh, new uh, innovation. I, I, I mean, the 创新的, 创新的故事 or 创新的一些, um, so maybe it's a, uh, it's seldom, seldom one people play two roles, but I think it is it, in some special uh, play, some special opera, okay. Thanks, Rachel. So yeah. there's, okay, back to the questions asked from our guest, Dolly. She asks, how long? Do you prepare to remember all the dialogue in a play? <laughs> How long do you prepare? I think it took a when I when I was in college uh, for a play. I we usually um, prepare it for two or three months. It's needed, but even though oh, it's a tragedy sometimes i still forgot on the on the stage <laughs> so yeah but it's a it's an unforgettable memory and i have a, a how to say that i think uh, uh the one the actor uh with me are very good so they can cover me then i will remind me for i'm going to to uh say next Yes, so it's um, the actors and actress on the stage are really not easy. It's not like uh, the movie you can rehearse, rehearsal and re rehearsal so many times. It's challenge, but just like our public speaking, right? When we <laughs> when we're going to deliver a speech, no time for us to forget. We have to rescue ourselves. Okay, 
Thank you, Dolly. Okay, so there is a question for Joe from our Pathways Chair Yunling. She asked, uh, Dear Joe, I enjoyed your classic presentation. Same question, has the Toastmasters training made you a better museum advocate? Oh, certainly, of course. <laughs> because when I applied for the volunteer in the museum, most of the volunteers, they will say, after the training, after test, we just want to serve at the dog or in the museum. And if you want to be, want me to be the tour guide, no, I won't take it. But except me, I will say, oh, I will take it every time. So every time I have uh, two shifts, uh, twice, twice shifts uh, in a month. So every day when I went there, then it was said, Joe, would you uh, be the tour guide this afternoon? I would say, no problem, I will take it. And that is because after so many years training as a Toastmasters, it is a very good opportunity to practice our public sharing. And, but my problem is I'm too talkative. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my job that usually was over time. <laughs> it was supposed to be and within 30 minutes, and sometimes I talk too much and almost 30 minutes, but this is the one I should improve too. Thank you. Thank you, Yulin, for your question. Okay, we also have another question to Joe from Sandwich Taipei Toastmasters, Alice Shi. To Joe, what is your favorite art piece or exhibition you ever seen in Museum 207? And she loves your sharing. Oh, what is your you mean, favorite uh, or exhibition? Yes, I really enjoy this. I just mentioned about the grapes, right? The big grapes, Pu Tao, symbolize the family prosperity. And do you know, because I didn't give you the whole picture, under that grapes, there's an English character. G R A P E S. So it means during that time, even it was built six, 60 years ago, the owner, original owner, I think that gentleman wanted their children and their grandchildren to study English. That's why they put the grapes, English with G R A P E S on the ground. That's a terrace rocks, very special. And I really, I'm very impressed by that works, grips. So you have to come to see that. Thank you, thank you for your question, Alice. Okay, so because our time seems is running out, if we don't have any other question, let's move on to our next session. Uh, sorry. Yes. Um, may I have one more question for uh, Rachel? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, I would like to ask that um, is there any advice for the beginner of Jingju learning? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. This is another part. Uh, for the beginner of Jingju, just uh, call my number. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a number here. <laughs> cool. My my oh, teacher, oh. yeah, my teacher is a famous teacher. She she is a famous teacher. She uh uh Jinghu Lao Shi, but uh, she also can teach the teach us how to sing correctly. She especially like the beginners. The beginners, you know, an excellent teacher always like beginners, just like a white paper. Yeah, never, never learned before. So she didn't like me so much <laughs> because I have some bad habits, not easy to change. So Maybe welcome to contact me. Okay. <laughs> welcome. Your, your name yeah. is Austin. Austin. 
Yeah, 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 welcome. We need more young men. Yeah, we need more young men to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know how to contact me? Um, or maybe I can give you the yeah number. Or maybe I can find the information on the meeting invitation. Okay, meeting invitation. Yes, yes. Just call me. We we are Peco Toastmasters. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Augustine. And I think it is a very valuable workshop tonight. We have uh, one fan of the, also uh, might be a learner of our packing opera. Wow. <laughs> that is <a> great. <laughs> so before we end up tonight's workshop, we would like to invite tonight's helpers and the speakers to give some feedback to us also promote our Paco Toastmasters Club. So the first, let's welcome our tonight's Zoom master, Yo Li. Hey, Yo. Hello, everyone. And I'll share the screen first. Okay, hi everyone. I'm the Zoom master tonight. I'm also the current president from Paco Toastmasters. And uh, when last month, when Joe asked me if I could be the helper for tonight's workshop, I immediately said yes, because this workshop held by Joe Wu and Rachel Yang, they are also two of our club's most experienced and senior members. And I've learned some, a lot from them. They're so experienced. And uh, tonight they show their different aspect Beside Toastmasters, they show their um, devo devotion about art and different aspects of art, like the culture, the archie, and the opera to us, and let us learn some more other than other than English skills. So I really appreciate them. And if you're really interested, you could also come to our club, um, Peco Toastmasters. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Yo. And next, let's welcome our tonight's timer, Chloe Xu. She is our current Area C3 director and also the upcoming uh, Division C director. Let's welcome Chloe. Good evening, hello members and guests. Will tonight and it's I'm current Area C3 director and uh, VP in PECO. It's my pleasure to be timer tonight. I'm so proud that we have PECO experience members, Joe and Rachel Young. They share their art and I feel they are passionate involved. Do you feel that as me, like me? Yeah, I, I think thank you for everyone for attending the workshop and I hope you enjoying the workshop and learn from them. Thank you back to host Celia. Thank you, Chloe. So next, let's welcome Rachel to give our Give out some words of tonight's workshop. <laughs> okay, um, it's so happy we we finish it. Yes, we what a wonderful cooperation. Thank for a beautiful young and the very creation um uh, host Celia and uh, uh, together with Yoli and uh, and uh, Chloe. And my best friend and my and my classmate Joe. It's really really um a wonderful night and it's um it's amazing. I I'm surprised that so many of you are uh, have questions about picking up. Hope in the future have a chance to visit your club. Maybe I can share you more and maybe in the future we can go to the theater together and I will volunteer to um explain how the how the opera is yes thank you all thank you for joining us thank you rachel and 
uh, if you have, if you notice that Yoli has uh, shared our evaluation link in the chat box. Yes, if you want to give out some feedback, please, please click the link and welcome any feedback and we will uh, very appreciate of that. So next, let's welcome Joe to give out some of the feedback of tonight's workshop. Okay, good evening again. And both Toastmasters and the Museum 2007 are non fic organization. That's why I want to promote Museum 2007. And you, can you put the PowerPoint on the, my elected pass? Yeah, L, yes, L, L4P2, Public Relations Strategies. It is about if you have some kind, some organization you want to promote, that more and more people to know about this organization, this is a good, good path that you can choose and you can do some, some public relationships, uh, promotion in different events. For example, this is a beginning, the workshop online. Mm, thanks to our District 67, our Pathways Chair Yun Ling and also our Co-Chair Kevin Ling. With your support, we have a uh, at least twice rehearsal before the workshop and still there's a lot of improvement so you can give us recommendation and uh, we hope you enjoy our workshop tonight and also please do come next week starting about May 20th our newest exhibition in Museum 2007. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. And next is my turn. Uh, I appreciate Joe to invited me to be the host of tonight's workshop. It makes me learn a lot how to host an online workshop. And uh, I think all the audience are very engaged in this workshop. Thank you all for joining us. And also don't forget to give out some feedback <laughs> of our evaluation. And thanks Pathways Program Chairs, Yunling Wang and Kevin Ling for organizing this uh, very valuable workshop to all the Toastmasters, also the guests. Without you, we cannot have this chance to learn and grow. So thanks all of you for spending the beautiful Saturday night with us and hope you all have learned something or enjoyed the speeches. Thank you. I think that is a wrap and... Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Awesome feedback. Thank you. And have a... Give us feedback. Thank you. Good night of a Saturday good night. night. Also a good Sunday. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.